Hey guys, so we're going to start today's video out and do a quick comparison between the P39N from yesterday's video to the P39Q, which is the Russian version that's always available. There's going to be a major difference between the two platforms, and it's really going to come in the form of the guns, which we actually have highlighted right here in the aircraft details. The only difference between these two aircraft is the lack of four 762 machine guns. You can see the effective range is only about 1,400 feet. Very, very short range. And while they are pumping out 23 damage apiece, so if you look at a total of four of them, you're not even capping 100 damage a second as a loss. So the overall damage comparison is 260 versus 352. So that does beg the question, though, when we're flying this aircraft, or I'm flying the P-39N, rather, what am I really relying on? For the most part, I'm really just relying on that 37 millimeter cannon. And while it is nice to have some sustained damage from the machine guns, and you do get a good fire chance from getting all those little light machine guns, really the 37 is doing the lion's share of the work. So when you see that gun getting hot, you saw that I pulled off the trigger and then we re-engaged. So... You're losing those four light machine guns, and I argue that while that is a loss, is it effectively as much of a loss when you're typically not using all those 7.62s in a continuous sustained damage stream? Some of you out there might figure out a way to do that and might use it very effectively, but for me, I'm really using the 37 and seldom am I just hammered down on the trigger letting those guns overheat and letting the little damage kind of accumulate and don't get me wrong it's definitely there and it is a contributing factor but sacrificing those four machine guns doesn't net you as zero gain in fact one of the things you'll note here and i gotta oh, that right now but take a look at the airspeed we are losing some weight by getting rid of the guns so naturally there's going to be some type of a gain in this case it's going to be eh, about eight miles an hour on the cruise speed and another three on the boost speed doesn't seem like a lot but it is there and it's something to acknowledge now the maneuverability says it's the same but there's actually a 10 degree a second increase in roll rate now that doesn't seem like a lot right now but when you start adding in some equipment you're going to get a little bit more out of it as well as that's going to continue to add to the multiplier Again, we're not talking about drastic differences here, but that's also the point I'm trying to make is that they're relatively comparable. We sim see similar altitude performances, and then we're also seeing increased, increased climb rate. So why are we seeing these differences aside from the weight? Well, the other reason is that da, 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 VBAT's major weakness is going to be shiny paint jobs. This aircraft has a shiny paint job available to it, and as such, it allows it to be able to increase its cruise speed by 3%. So I'm going to go ahead and reset this back to the basic equipment setup because this is not specialized yet. I'm going to go ahead and throw in one of my best pilots in here, which is going to be my MiG-15 pilot. And then the P-39N, we're going to... He's already reset to his main equipment, and we're going to throw the F-86 pilot in here. And now when we compare these two aircraft, you are going to see a major difference between the two platforms... But you'll also note that we are still seeing an increase in the overall maneuverability despite the fact that we have a specialized P-30N. Now, some of that is due to the fact that we are running the lightweight covering on here, the, sorry, the polished skin, which is going to increase the airspeed but sacrifices some maneuverability. But you can also see that the roll rate is going to be slightly less on the p39q but again it's not specialized yet so i think that there's something to bear in mind here that while there is a difference between these two platforms effectively in their use you're going to get a little bit more speed and a little bit better climb rate out of the p39q uh, but losing the 762 machine guns is going to be the major downfall a lot of people think that's huge but we're going to go ahead and hop into some gameplay with a P-39Q and see how that actually plays out in all practicality. All right, so here we are in the battle. Again, we're running our MiG-15 pilot in here. Not quite to the same level of skill points that we see in the P-39N pilot. That's from my F-86 Sabre. But, you know, I do fly the American aircraft quite a bit more. 
It is shiny. This is going to be the Lin Lease version, so it had some differences, but uh, apparently the Russians really like this plane, and it was a bit of a fan favorite. Mostly because the 37mm cannon could be used to great effect against ground targets, and the Russians really needed to make sure that all of their aircraft had kind of a multiple use kind of trait to them, so they could use them in that capacity to great effect. There's that big 37 getting those hits like we talked about before, and it seems to be doing all right damage to me. Coming back down on the bow fighter, that's over. But again, some good chunk and damage. And now we're going to be heading over to the airfield, and we're getting some pretty decent speeds out of this aircraft again, unspecialized. All right. Well, looks like we got the whole team with us here. Grabbing the airfield is a fairly standard tactic at this point in the match. There is going to be a couple of heavy fighters coming into this zone as well. There's an enemy tornado. Two tornadoes. I'm straight at the one that's charging me and then find a new target. Here we go. You're worth 60 points. Here's that big old 37 hitting. We've already gotten the forward airfield, but let's kill Dylan if we can. We took out his engine, and now I'm actually running into a problem where I'm passing him. Uh, high five? High five. We're going to leave him alone. Let's get over to the garrison. We can still do some pretty good work over there. There is a human Spitfire right there. That needs to go. Cool. You kind of got the wrath of our entire team there. Somebody should probably go after him, and there's a bomber. Two bombers over there. Oh, jeez. Yeah, we broke the whole team apart here. Good chunk damage. Again, it's that 37 doing the lion's share of the work on this platform. In a lot of ways, this reminds me of the XFL1 differences we upgrade to 50. Now, roll rate, you do feel it. It feels pretty good, actually. A little bit surprising. I'm not going to go over there, mostly because I just realized none of my team is heading in that direction. Yes, I just went into a head-on with a heavy, and we managed to take him out because that's how confident I am in the guns on this platform. And quite a few times I've caught some Spitfires off guard. I could have waited a half second there on that guy. Yeah, he's worth a lot of points, and he's stalled. Come on, where is it? That was unlucky. Oh, come on. We got a heavy on our six. It's the key we went after earlier. That's our own punishment for getting cocky with him earlier. And now there's another one here. We are catching a lot of tail gunner fire here. Can we get him? Looks like the time to kill is working out pretty well for us. Oh. Defense aircraft. And we managed to pick up the zone. Mosquito does not have a tail gunner. Air supremacy achieved. This would probably be one of those examples where it would have been nice to have the other four light machine guns, but I don't feel like it hindered us that bad. Close on this 129 Bravo. I 
extra couple of light machine guns probably would have kicked that one over the edge as well. So there are examples of where it could have been a little bit better. But at the same time, I feel as though it's an accurate representation that we are getting some decent maneuverability out of the platform, decent airspeed as well. And that the 37 still has the oomph that it had before. It's just that you're not getting as much sustained in. So being able to chunk away a decent amount of hit points from a heavy or from another light fighter is easy enough. Is he going to bomb trap me? I kind of want him to. Okay. Uh, what else we got? Heavies are going to come back in a second here. Let's get a little bit of altitude. Brave some of the incoming flak. What's going to be the next thing that comes at me? Light fighter and a head on. There we go. See, now this is causing me to need that 37 ahead. And as long as I'm okay with that, and I can get it to do what I want, it can do a pretty decent amount of damage in a very short period of time. Now, this is also unspecialized, so bear that in mind compared to yesterday's video where we actually had a pretty stellar run. But I do think that it's important to note that just because this is different, and that you might be holding out for the P39N, but the P39Q is still a viable option. I do really like this platform. It kind of surprised me. I was expecting to not like it. Uh, and what I've really discovered is they're essentially the same aircraft, just with a slight change. One sacrifices a little bit of damage per second in order to get a little bit more of an edge when it comes to speed and climb rate. And... A lot of the time, if you've been playing this game long enough, you'll realize that positioning is probably nine-tenths of this game, and getting into the right position with the right amount of airspeed and energy disposal is going to be a majority of a fight. It's not all about just who has the highest turn rate or who has the most damage per second. It's going to be who can get the, that those weapons and that damage on the enemy in a very economical way and catch them by surprise and control that engagement. And this aircraft can do this. At no point was I afraid of approaching that Spitfire. I just made sure I did it on my terms. And this platform, just like the P-39N, allows me to do that, but just a little bit better. Just by a whisker. But is it worth losing four 7.62 machine guns? Really up to you to decide whether or not you want to hold out or not. But I still think the Q is a very viable platform, and I'm kind of looking forward to specializing it so that way I can do a little bit more of a comparison between the two platforms. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know it's a little bit of more of the same, but I think it's good to draw a comparison because too many times people ask me what's really the difference between the two, and this is pretty much it. And a bit of it comes down to having shiny paint, because it does add a little bit more to that cruise speed. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll catch you on the next one.